Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to another week of virtual Sunday school. Today we're celebrating Easter. As Christians, we also call it Resurrection Sunday. So um, this week's lesson is called Discerning the Truth. And um, again, I want to tell everybody to um, stay safe and uh, you know, looking forward to when we can be back together and as a church. And in the meantime, we're just going to keep doing these virtual Sunday school classes. Hopefully they work out and uh, you're able to follow along. I've mailed out your parents the materials that you'll need, the class notes, along with your take home. Um, you get points and everything like that. If you complete all your handouts that I've been sending home and you bring them back when we get back to Sunday school, you'll get all your points we need for our class. So make sure you're doing all those handouts. So we ready? Already there. So today, our memory verse comes from Matthew 28, 6. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Amen. Yes, that's a good memory verse for today. So before we get started, I want to open up in prayer before we start today's lesson. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be together um, virtually, Lord, and to be able to celebrate um, your death, burial, and resurrection, Lord, and just thankful that you came to be our personal, came in your, my personal Savior and our personal Savior for anyone that believes in you, Lord. And I just pray also, if anyone is listening today that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, that they'll seek somebody out, whether they send me an email or talk to their parents or maybe call our church and uh, speak to someone so that they can get more information and we can show them through the Bible what the Bible says about our Lord Jesus, um, our Lord and Savior, and we can show them how they too can get to know him and be saved, Lord, and get to know you all. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Alrighty. So before we get started, we're going to play a little game here. All right. So I have several questions here, and I want you, and I'm, it's about myself, and I want you to figure out which one of these questions is true and which one of these is false. So I'll give you two statements. One is going to be true, and one is going to be false. You ready? Here's the first one. So the first statement. I once had a pet chinchilla. The second statement. I'm the oldest of three siblings. So which one do you think of those statements are false? Well, I guess if you said I'm the oldest of three siblings, nope, you're wrong. I'm the only child. I don't have any brothers or sisters. And yes, I really did once have a pet chinchilla. Already, you ready for the next question? All right, here's the first question. My, my first car was a Volkswagen Bug. Next question. I once was on a TV game show. Which one of you think that, which question do you think was true? Hmm. Well, if you said I was once on a TV game show, you'd be right. I was out visiting my relatives out in California when I was a, a young child, probably around 12 or 13. And they took me to go see the um, let's make a deal. And I was in the audience and actually I was able to get on the show and won a prize while I was there. So, and my first car was not a Volkswagen bug. It was a Lincoln. So, so, okay. Our next question, and our last one. So first true, I traveled to Morocco when I was younger. Or is this one true? I speak fluent Chinese. Which one do you think, which question do you think is true? Well, if you think I speak fluent Chinese, you would be wrong. I've been to China several times and I can say stuff like thank you, shei shei, or ni hao for hello, but that's the extent, maybe a half a dozen or dozen words to get me by, but definitely don't speak fluent Chinese. I'd like to someday, but I did go, I did travel to Morocco when I was uh, um, in my late teens with my parents. So all right, so that's enough about me and the, our game. So I want to talk about, do you know what the word discern means? Think about it. Ask your parents if you're not quite sure. So discern. So to discern means to recognize or identify things as separate or different. So we learned some new things about me today. And sometimes it's hard to tell what was true and what was false 
In today's lesson, we'll learn some false theories made by up say to make some false theories people made up to say that Jesus really didn't die on the cross or rise again. We can learn to recognize and answer these false ideas using the most reliable book. What's the most reliable book for facts about Jesus's life, death, and resurrection? What is it? That's right, the Bible. It's the most trustworthy historical record we have. And why is that? Think about it. Okay, that's because it was inspired by God himself. The Bible is God's word to us, so we know it's true. All right, remember the, the attributes and the qualities that we've been talking about in Sunday school for last couple, um, this year and last year, and um, talked about all the qualities. So what qualities or attributes are, of God makes his word so trustworthy and accurate? Think about it. Okay, so God is holy and cannot sin or lie, so we know his word is true. God is eternal, so he was there before the beginning and will be there always will be in the future. And God is omniscient. He's all knowing. God is sovereign, in complete control of everything, including the events of human history. We believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus because that is what the Bible clearly tells us. But even people who don't believe the Bible must accept certain historical facts even though they may try to explain away the significance or meaning of these facts. So as you should have your class notes out at this time. And you'll fill these out as we go along. So as we fill out the class notes, we'll learn some widely accepted facts we know to be true about Jesus' death and resurrection. Then we'll look at some theories people have come up with to try to deny these events. When you're done with this lesson, you should be able to use the facts you've learned and the verses we read to fully understand why these theories are false. Already? So, the first fact is about how Jesus died. You see, the Jewish religious leaders were jealous of Jesus because the people tr listened to him because of his miracles. They arrested Jesus and put him on trial. They said he was worthy of death proclaiming to be God. But the Jews couldn't put anyone to death because they were ruled by the Romans. So they brought Jesus to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Pilate was afraid the Jews would start a riot if he let Jesus go. So he ordered that Jesus be crucified. Do you know what a crucifixion is? See, a crucifixion was a method that the Romans used to kill people, often rebels or criminals. The person was nailed by their hands and feet to a wooden cross until they died. It was a slow, painful, and public way to die. So let's read. We're going to reach John 19, 28 through 35. Get your Bible out and follow along as I read. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was a set vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and they put it upon the hyssop and put it in his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For that Sabbath day was a high day. They sought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers, break the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. Forthwith came there out blood and water. He said, It bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. So how did Jesus die? Let's look back in verse 30. 
Let's see. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. What do you think it meant when he said, it is finished? You see, Jesus was finished paying the punishment we deserve for our sins. He bore our sins on the cross so that we can be forgiven. Only after our debt was paid did Jesus give up the spirit to die. He is God, so his death was his choice. So what happened when the Roman soldiers came back to break the legs of Jesus to speed up his death? Do you remember? Okay, let's go ahead. They saw that he was already dead, so they didn't have to break his legs. So what did the soldiers do instead? Do you remember? Yeah, when they, they, they pierced his side and out came blood and water. The soldiers didn't break Jesus' leg, but one of them stabbed a spear into Jesus' side. Blood and water coming out shows that Jesus was definitely dead. John, a disciple and close friend of Jesus, recorded the detail. What did John say about what had happened or account of the event in verse 35? He said, his record is true. and He saw this happen. You see, John was there at Jesus's crucifixion and saw him die and then get pierced with a spear. So let's fill out our first blank on the class notes, okay? First one. So John leaves no doubt that Jesus died on the cross. Our first one, okay. So Jesus died by crucifixion. Good job. All right. So back to our back to the Bible. Now we're going to read Matthew 28, verses 1 through 15. Jesus leaves no doubt that Jesus. John leaves no doubt that Jesus died on the cross. Now we're going to read about Jesus' resurrection. Starting in Matthew 28, I'm going to read verses 1 through 15. You see, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like a lightning, and his raiment white as snow. For fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, he said. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. and Go quickly and tell the disciples that he is ridden from the dead. And behold, Goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher for, with fear and great joy, did run to bring his disciples' word. As they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and shewed upon the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money under the, money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. This saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So, what did the two Marys see when they first went to Jesus' sepulcher or tomb on Sunday morning, which was the first day of the week? What did they see? Do you remember? Let's go back. And behold, an angel of the Lord was sitting on a stone rolled away from the tomb. The women were coming to prepare Jesus' body with spices. 
but when they came to the tomb, they got quite a surprise. The Roman guards were unable to speak or move for fear of the angel who had appeared and rolled back the stone. So why did the angel roll back the stone? Yeah, so the women could see that the tomb was emptied. What good news did the angel give the women about Jesus? Yep, that Jesus was there, was not there, and he had risen, and he was alive. See, the angel's good news is our memory verse. The women could see that Jesus was no longer in the tomb. They ran to tell the disciples. But when they ran, who did they see along the way? Do you remember? Who did they run into? Right here. And as they went to tell the disciples in verse 9, behold, Jesus met them saying, all hail. And they came and held him at his feet and worshipped him. Jesus appeared to them. The women worshipped at Jesus' feet. He told them not to be afraid. He wanted them to give a message to the disciples. The women hurried to tell the disciples the good news, that Jesus was alive. The women weren't the only ones who knew the tomb was empty. Who else knew? That's right. The Roman soldiers were watching the tomb. Some of the soldiers keeping watch over the tomb were worried about getting in trouble. They went to the Jewish, Jewish chief priest or elders and told them what had happened. And what did the chief priest tell the soldiers to do? They said, tell people the disciples came and stole Jesus' body while they were sleeping. You see, no one could deny that Jesus' body was gone, and the priests knew that Jesus had said that he would rise on the third day. They didn't want people believing in Jesus, so they paid the soldiers to spread a lie about what had happened. Even Jesus' enemy knew the second fact on our class notes. Number two, the tomb was, what is it? Empty. Good job. All right. And I'm all great. Now what's number three? Blank were the first witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. Women. All right. Jesus' disciples didn't believe the women when they came and told them they'd seen Jesus. They were afraid of the Jewish leaders who would put Jesus to death. But Jesus appeared to his disciples and let them see the nail marks in his hands and feet and the wounds in the side from the spear. He ate meals with them to show that he was really alive in a body and wasn't a ghost or a vision. For 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to many followers and spoke to his disciples. Before Jesus went back to heaven, he told his followers to be witnesses of everything they had seen and heard. The disciples were elated that Jesus was alive. Sometime after Jesus ascended and went back to heaven, the disciples were filled with the Holy Ghost. and They began to speak boldly about Jesus. Let's, so let's read what Apostle Peter said when he stood up before a huge crowd of Jews. We're going to turn to Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 22 to 24. Follow along as I read, please. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. God hath raised up, having loosened the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be hidden of it. So what did Peter say about Jesus? That he was crucified and slain by wicked hands, but God raised him up. Peter talked about the miracles wonders, and signs that Jesus had done during his ministry. Jesus did a lot of amazing miracles. Do you remember what some of these miracles that Jesus did? Think about them. Okay, here's a couple. How about, do you remember when he healed the sick? Or how about when he calmed the storm? Or cast the demon out of, um, cast the demon, he cast the demon out of several people. Fed thousands of people. Or raised the dead. Remember the 
raised Lazarus? Yes. So, whose plan was it for Jesus to be killed and crucified? Think about it. It was God's plan. God has complete control of everything. It was his definite plan for his son, Jesus, to be crucified to save us from our sins. So why could Jesus not be held by death? Think about it. Why could Jesus not be held by death? Well, that's because he is God and he's all powerful. Jesus conquered death when he rose again, showing that he is God and that he is the only way for us to be saved. All right, let's continue on with our class notes. Number four, the blank boldly told others that Jesus rose from the dead. What do we have here? The disciples, that's great. Two other men who didn't believe in Jesus while he was on earth believed after Jesus appeared to them later. These men were Paul and James, the half-brothers of Jesus. Paul was also called Saul, and he was a man who persecuted Christians, those who believed in Jesus. Saul was on his way to arrest more Christians when a light from heaven shone and Jesus spoke to him. See, Saul was blind after this encounter, but God sent a Christian named Ananias to Saul. We're going to read Acts chapter 9 and verses 17 and 18. Ananias went his way and entered in the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightst receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been with scales and received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. So who did Ananias say had reported to Saul on the road? He said, well, yes, that's right, the Lord Jesus. And why did Jesus send Ananias to Saul? So that Saul might receive his sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So what happened next? Up, well, Saul received his sight, he rose and was baptized. So what's the important about Saul getting baptized what does that mean? You see, that meant that Saul believed that Jesus was God. By getting baptized, he was publicly showing his faith in Jesus' death and resurrection and turning from his sin. Saul, also known as Paul, became a great missionary, traveling to many cities and countries to spread the gospel and to start churches. James, the half-brother of Jesus, did not believe in Jesus at first, but he later became a leader in the church after he saw that Jesus after he saw a risen Jesus. See, in Galatians 2.9, list James, Peter, and John as pillars or strong leaders in the early church. They reached out to Paul and gave him and Barnabas the job of sharing the gospel to the Gentiles. Remember, Gentiles are non-Jewish people. So let's go ahead and fill out number five. Blank and blank believed after they saw the risen Jesus. Who was that? Paul and James. Very good. All right. So let's move on. So there's five facts that we covered are supported by other historical documents and accounts, even by scholars who don't necessarily believe the Bible. However, some people who don't believe Jesus is the Son of God have come up with theories or their ideas to explain away what actually happened. So re let's read about these theories from our class notes now okay number six it wasn't jesus who died on the cross but another disciple who looked just like him so these theories offered alternate explanations for several of the facts we learned but none of them can explain all five we'll do an activity now so let's go over the theories together the idea that it wasn't jesus on the cross attempts to deny fact one and two, that it was Jesus who died and, it was, and, and was buried and rose again. However, it cannot explain the account of the women who saw Jesus or the conversation with Paul and James. So how do we know the theory is false? Think about it. The women and the disciples saw the nail marks and spear wounds and the resurrection, 
resurrected Jesus. He would only have these wounds if he died of crucifixion and was raised with a physical body. So, let's fill out the problem with this theory. Yep, the nail marks and the risen Jesus. Okay, number seven. Jesus fell into a coma on, coma on the cross and later revived in the tomb. Hmm. So, what problem do we have with this one? You see, this theory also denies the fact, one, and explains the empty tomb by saying Jesus revived and came out. But we talked a bit about the crucifixion. The Romans had perfect, perfected this method of death. No one could survive it. And also, did we read in John's gospel about the soldiers who came to break Jesus' leg? He was already dead, so the spear confirmed it. When the women met Jesus after they saw the empty tomb, did it sound like Jesus was wounded and barely clinging to life? No, he was healthy and strong. And would Jesus' disciples risk their lives to spread the news of his resurrection if they'd seen a wounded Jesus who really hadn't died? No. It wasn't easy for the disciples to tell others about Jesus. They were persecuted and endangered for their lives. All but one of the disciples died for their faith. Would people be willing to die for something they absolutely knew was a lie? No way. So let's fill in the problem here. Disciples wouldn't die for what they knew was a lie. All right, number eight. Jesus' body was moved or stolen before Sunday morning. All right, there's a lot of problems here. This view acknowledges that Jesus died on the cross and the tomb was empty, but it claims Jesus' dead body was stolen. You see, this theory has many problems because it can't explain the appearance of Jesus to so many people after his resurrection. We saw when his theory began, the Jewish leaders told the guards to spread the rumor about the disciples um, stealing Jesus' body. What's the problem with the disciples stealing Jesus' body? Disciples couldn't have stole it. Enemies would have shown it. So the enemies wanted to sh would have shown that he would see he was still dead. So not only were the disciples not equipped or trained to take on Roman soldiers, but they were also afraid and hiding from the Jews. They were in no condition to steal Jesus' body. And what's the problem with Jesus' enemies stealing the body? If his enemies had his body, they would have what well, they would have shown everybody that he, that he had really was was still dead. All right, number nine. This, Jesus' followers, followers either hallucinated or had visions of the risen Jesus. This view is very popular among critics today. They say that the women and disciples were so upset after seeing Jesus suffer and die, that they hallucinated or imagined what they saw, that they saw Jesus alive again. What do you think the problem with this is? You see, Jesus appeared to the women and his disciples numerous times, but we also know that he appeared to over 500 people before he returned to heaven. It's impossible for that many people to have the same hallucination over 40 days, especially if those people weren't close family friends of Jesus. Plus, this theory does not explain Paul and James seeing and believing in Jesus. So let's fill out the, yep, many people, not just Jesus' friends or family, reported seeing and believing that Jesus had risen. All right, number 10. Writers of the Bible invented the resurrection long after the event supposedly took place. Okay, some people try to say that the writers had added miraculous details like the resurrection to the account of Jesus' life over time. Can you think of any problems with this one? You see, if writers back in Jesus' day or even centuries after were making up details, don't you think they'd have Jesus appear to important people after the resurrection? like a high priest or a king? Instead, who did Jesus appear to first? It's one of our facts, it was women. Women weren't considered credible or believable witnesses back then, and their importance in the story would have been an embarrassing detail. If the writers had only been making up the story, they wouldn't have included women. Stories that are embellished or exaggerated over time would have credible detail, nothing embarrassing. Rather, this shows that the writers of the gospel recorded events as they really happened. 
So let's fill out the problem with this statement. Details were too embarrassing to be made up. Very good. The Bible gives us the detail about Jesus' death and resurrection. The account from the people who saw him die and who saw him after he'd risen were written so we'd know these events are true and believe that Jesus is the Son of God. When the women met Jesus after the, they left the tomb, they fell at his feet and worshipped him. They were, recognized, they were recognizing Jesus as their Savior and Lord. See, the resurrection, which we celebrate at Easter, shows that Jesus is God that he conquered death for us. So why do you think people came up with theories to deny Jesus' death and resurrection? Why? You see, they've never read the Bible. They don't want to admit that Jesus is the Son of God and is the only way to be saved. They've been taught that these theories, they've been taught that these theories are true. Their sinful hearts also don't want to face God as their judge and Jesus as their Lord. It's important to know our Bible well so we can show people from God's word what really happened. We must be discerning and learn to recognize the ideas that are not true according to the Bible. So what books in the Bible record the details of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection? These are called the Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you've never read the Gospels for yourself before, you can start today. The message of Easter is one of hope and joy. and It's found in each gospel account. No matter how many th theories people make up to deny this event, we know it's true. And Jesus is still saving people today. Amen. Okay. Good. That was today's lesson. Let me go back. So, I handed out, you got to... That I gave you some handouts to um, take home notes and um, review questions to go over with your parents when you get a chance. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your Resurrection Sunday celebration today. Um, be safe, have a good meal. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all again. Let me just close in prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, just thank you again to be able to. Um, go over this uh, lesson today, Lord, and and go over the facts that we can know is true from the Bible about your death, burial, and resurrection, Lord. And again, I just pray that anyone listening to this message, the Sunday school lesson, that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, might seek somebody out or actually read the Bible, read the full account in the Gospels, and and read what truly happened. And just, and if they want more information, call our church, call our pastor, call me. Um, we can we can show them that um, how they can know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Again, thank you for everything you give to us, our family, our church, and keep us and keeping us healthy and safe, Lord. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name.